Hey guys, it's Coogly again with another ROM review and this time, well, it's a special device, it's a special ROM, let's cut to the chase. It is a OnePlus 7 Pro with Havoc ROM, so let's get started. So guys, the OnePlus 7 has a pretty decent amount of ROMs available. Havoc is one of them. If you have no idea what Havoc ROM is, you haven't been on the ROM scene for quite a bit of time now, I guess. But Havoc ROM is one of the best ROMs available for any device, to be extremely honest. And uh, it just works really well. Let's get started. First of all, what you saw there is the ambient display settings are working. Uh, pickup sensor is available. Although I do have a few issues with it, which I will mention in the coming sections. The launcher is Launch Air, so it does work really well has a lot of options available and this is the latest alpha version so as you can see this is the version which is available is one of the best launchers available let's go to the about phone page in the about phone page you can see that it is for the one plus seven it is android 9.0 of course the july security patches are available which is the latest one kernel is uh pretty interesting i don't know which uh kernel this is using anyways it is a good kernel the havoc version is 2.7 25 build available the official for our device and the maintainer is the legend himself skull shadies it's bound to be good now i see the status on this one is enforcing which again i will mention about a few things in the coming sections now that is it in the about phone page if you are interested in the custom rom for the oneplus devices you probably know havoc is a very very big juggernaut of a rom it has a billion features it is the most feature rich rom available for our devices and probably any of the other devices for which the rom is available that being said let Let's get started everything is working i didn't have much of an issue there are there is a list of things which i would consider a little bit not baked in completely which i will mention in the period section of the rom review but as of now let's get started the internet settings are working i was using wi-fi on all my settings it does work out really well dns is working sim card switch is working and i really didn't have an issue with the sim 2 getting selected as sim 1 and all that which i had experienced in previous phones so all of that seems to be not an issue in this one let's get to the extra features because there is a lot to cover now i'm not going to cover piece by piece on every feature you can check out one of few of my other ROMs for it. I'm going to cover those which are interesting to me and uh, which I like, which I use a lot and also which seems to be new in the latest version available. All the features are inside the Havoc settings in the status bar option. You do have a few options here. Power pull down, quick pull down, binders control, all of that is available. Clock options are available. It does have auto height. Personally, don't really care too much about that. Clock styles are available. Fun styles are available. They can be enabled or disabled, which is pretty cool. Now, battery style options are available. You do have a few options here. Q style is available. Battery percent can be inside the icon outside the icon battery bar settings are available and it does have a option for gradient color shift and all that network traffic indicators are available and i am a fan of this one where you have the network traffic indicator on the expanded status bar rather than having it on the normal status bar and uh, I, I just like it a lot that is pretty cool this is where it will be if you are using it only on expanded but you also have the option for having it on the status bar which is one of the feature which seems to be not working correctly i'm not really sure why that is now why data indicators are available carrier label settings are also available which is pretty cool custom logo options are available if you want a logo on the status bar for havoc which you can have status bar icon can be customized which is available and you can customize that notification count battery bluetooth battery style vld icon can be disabled old type mobile style icons is available 4g instead of lte all of these options are available breathing notification is available and the quick setting panel you do have options for customizing the layout of it minus slider can be above the icons below the icons with the auto brightness icon or the right or left all of these options are available tile title vibrate or touch all of these options are available and working correctly so that is pretty cool these are all the tiles which are available and i'm using right now so as you can see everything which you might need is available and you can customize it to your heart's content it's a very very comprehensive list it has everything it has one-handed mode it has gaming mode cafe poppers camera shortcuts you can customize that and the interface options you do have options to select between pixel style and asp i pretty much prefer pixel style all 
all the time because it's much better looking and this is a very interesting looking rom it is it is what i would consider what i like to have my rom as which is minimalistic tiny doesn't take a necessary space on the screen and i really like it you do have a few background colors which is really cool i will talk more about these in the aesthetic section because there is a few options available quick setting theme which you can customize the opacity of it default color can be enabled or you can have a custom color for it tile style can be customized which is also a really interesting feature you have a lot of options i'm using neon light you can customize that to your heart's content now switch appearance can be customized this is what i'm using which is the material design too you can also have option for normal and also the one plus switch option the ambient display option you do have music ticker you can enable that i'm not really interested in that battery level indicator is also available which is pretty cool now in the ambient options you do have options for always on i personally don't use it and also always on when charging if you have your device charging it can have the ambient display on always and you can get the notification new notification double tap to check on phone is available which is kind of a safety feature does have the lift to check phone uh, proximity sensor and uh for hand wave and pocket mode one thing which i do want to mention is that the tilt sensor or the check the phone option it's a bit slow too slow for me to just use it as a daily driver that is one of my biggest interaction with the phone i have been tuned to just pick up my phone unlock the device and just get into the device all the time from my experience with 60 and this device with oxidos and other wrong the delay which is available with the pickup and main display sensor to unlock the fingerprint scanner that does cause a little bit of a jarring issue and screen options you do have smart pixel you can enable smart pixel to save a lot of battery life it does work really well if you are someone who travels a lot you can just enable that and really get a lot of uh, battery life from this device screen stabilization is also available if you are someone who travels a lot now framework values can be customized for rounded corners corner content padding and also corner padding is available one thing which i do want to mention is that as like any other aosp rom corners are not smooth there is a slight amount of jagged pixels available that just comes with the territory i personally never noticed that when i'm using the phones now button options are available power menu options are available where you have all of these options you have on the go mode address remote can be enabled from here which is really cool and call by pressing the power button is available screen of torch is available which is one of my favorite features by long pressing on this power button you have the torch up option available and i really like that it is really cool volume buttons are, options are also available where you have the volume button on the left you have the expanded uh, volume button also which does work out really well keyboard cursor control is available which is one of my favorite features in a custom rom control music by long pressing the volume button is available navigation bar options are also available if you want to enable navigation bar you can have that it does have smart board fling settings and also stock options pulse is available all that personally i like the gesture options it does have a one plus gesture option what i really like in this one is it does have a haptic feedback slider so you can precisely customize how much haptic feedback you want in the interaction method and i really like it i like it to be very precise and very tight and i've set it at 20 milliseconds it works really well now apart from that in the system gestures you have double tap the power button to go to camera to activate torch by long pressing swipe up on home button if you are using nav bar you can enable that also pretty well gesture anywhere is available personally i don't use it much but it is available for those who do swipe to screenshot is available by three finger screenshots it also comes with edge gestures if you are someone who's coming from miui you might appreciate it personally i don't really care too much about that my controls are also available which is pretty neat in the lock screen options there are a lot of options and I, this is one of my favorite aesthetic features about this rom you have a lot of options here so you can have a media cover art music visualizer if you want that clock widgets can be customized i i really like the sammy clock widget because it just works really well you can also have the textile clock widget from android q which is this one works decently well personally i i pretty much prefer the sammy option it looks clean the info widget that is the zen option can also be customized which is the weather and the date information you can disable the weather if you don't want that temperature unit can be customized from here pocket detection is available fp authentication vibration is available if you don't want the vi vibration for it you can enable or disable that face auto unlock is available if you are someone who uses the google face unlock feature it does open up the screen without any interaction elements can be enabled or disabled so quick setting uh, status bar all that is available i like a minimalistic look so i have disabled the status bar and the bottom shortcuts mid screen shortcuts can also be enabled if you want to use it and the recent option you do have customization options available for quick step which is my favorite one which is the android pi one you also have options for a stock option grid view android go which is again a kind of a grid view and also slim recent which is really 
really cool. You do have options for setting up the slim reason the way you want it. The notification options, you do have heads up options. You can enable, disable uh, the timeout. Uh, the snooze timer can be disabled. Timeout option can be customized also, which is really cool. It does have a less boring heads up, so it will only show heads up for a dialer and also messaging app. It works really well in conjunction with ticker and I really like ticker. Now, I have been waiting to use ticker option ever since I got the OnePlus 7 Pro because there is no notch. So yeah, the ticker was there, but yeah, it kind of just went black. Many times that doesn't happen, but what does happen is that the text not centered, like it, it's not centered vertically. It's on the top edge of it, so a few of the things does get cut off from the edge of it. It's a very minor thing, but it is the kind of details which I wanted. It does come with the kill app button, which is really cool. I really like that because you have an option to just kill the app if, if it's just not working correctly. In call vibration options are also available, which is pretty nice to see. And the animation options, you do have customization for all the animation options. I mean, you can customize this as you want it. It is a very, very customizable ROM. System options, you do have signature spoofing if you are someone who uses that. Burden protection is available, which will shift the pixels here and there, which is really cool. Now in the input method, you do have select a notification option. You can disable that outright if you don't want that ugly thing on the status bar. Full screen keyboard can be enabled or disabled for the keyboard to enable that. Battery saving options, you does have a sensor block per package option, which does work really well. I'm getting pretty good battery life with it, but I'll mention that again in the next section. Aggressive battery life can be enabled if you want it. The spend action is available if you want a little bit more juice when the screen is off. Those settings are available if you are an expert and also time in stage is available if you want to see how your device is doing. In the miscellaneous option, you do have a gaming mode which does work really well. You can customize it to your preferences. I personally don't game much on the device. I don't use it. Dodging animation can be disabled and it is a very interesting animation. I like it. It's not the warp animation and you will Will miss the warp animation and again warp charging is working so that is the animation available which is really cool warp charging is available you don't need to worry about it it was charging at about 5000 milliamp per hour i'm really happy with it you also have the screen shortcut options where you have you can enable the screen shortcuts and also you can select the quality and type of screenshot and screen record and that is pretty much it in the havoc settings as you can see it's a very very feature rich rom if you want to know more about this one go to the forum section it is out there you can and see how it works and you can see what all options are available do make sure to read the entire forum because there are a lot of things available there you will only gain knowledge by reading it let's get to the battle life the battle life of the bomb is also pretty decent actually i am really excited to see the battle life of this worm now i've been using this with the stock configuration for about a day then i switched to a custom kernel to just see how it works merce was the only kernel which was working at the time yes there is also sky Dragon, but it was an older version i didn't want to try that out with what i'm getting i'm actually getting a very interesting amount of battle life now i did charge a little bit here because i was going out and i was at about what 40 percentage or 50 percentage of battle life but i have to say that i'm getting great active rain and great idle rain the active rain is sitting somewhere around 11 percentage idle rain is right about one percentage and this is consistent okay i'm getting uh these results over a 28 hour period of using the phone and then I switched to a custom kernel. It surprises me that the custom kernel didn't really change much. Usually with the 60 at least, the kernel was notorious for being not very battery efficient. The developer or the maintainer himself said to change the kernel to something else. And I did. And I tried that with this one. Doesn't bring appreciable changes. Then more, I would say that it hurts the idle rate. Maybe because of Dalby cache and all that. That has been my experience. The inbuilt kernel is great for battery and the device overall is great for battery. 1% of idle rate is just really, really good. One more thing is that it does have an option to change the refresh rate, which is enabled in the newer versions. It doesn't have an option to change the resolution, but the refresh rate can be changed if you want a little bit more battle life when the screen is on. Now, continuing with the features, I missed a few things. It does have color settings if you want to calibrate it to whatever you want. It also has a reading mode, which is really cool. Nightlight is available, which is nice. Also, device extras is where you will find the alert slider settings. Fortunately, I cannot see an option to change the vibration slider not really sure if it's a new implementation or any other differences it is not available on this option at least one more thing in the system options it does have an ota updater and a havoc ota updater was really good and i really like that keep in mind i have done all my tests with 90 hertz fresh rate and full 1440 display resolution i have not changed it i did not even consider changing it for a lot of my time now let's get to the performance of the rom now it is 
an 855 processor so of course it's going to be really good the performance score has been consistently about 365,000. whatever the case may be this is what i have been getting so uh yeah that's pretty much it now the stability of the rom uh, this is where I would like to consider that this is still a custom ROM and uh, it can have some wonky things going on when you're using the device. Now, I've experienced a few things where my device was locked. I got a phone call, I unlocked the device and I just the phone is just ringing i cannot take up a call that's that's pretty much it so yeah there are a few things which i have noticed this was a one-time thing it did not happen again i mean the fact that it happened one time is not very reassuring another instance where i had an issue is that the room i was in was just dark and for some reason the pocket mode info came up that uh, i have to long press on the power button to unlock the device because it thought the device proximity sensor was just being covered because the room was dark Dark. That's just one thing which I have noticed. I think the auto brightness ambient light sensor uh, being under the display and all that it's not working very well. I have the same issue with about with the 959 release of Oxygen OS where uh, the, the automatic brightness was just not very good. Um, every time it would just put up a brightness level which was not really cool for the environment and I really did, really had to go and uh, release or change the value manually. I had an issue with this, I, I am still having an issue with this also where whenever I open a page which is white, the auto brightness will just kick in and just increase the brightness on its own and uh, even though the, the ambient light around me is very dim, it should decrease the brightness. These are kings which is available and these are the few stability hitches which I've experienced but uh, none of it is really deal breaking for me except for maybe the pickup ambient display option which is coming a little bit too late. Sometimes it just doesn't come up either. I went out with my friends today to take a few pictures to just hang out. It can get a little bit infuriating when you expect the device to turn on and it just doesn't. Uh, some things which I noticed. Another thing which I do want to mention is that out of the box the uh, fingerprint options, the CTS options does not pass. Safety check does not pass fully it will fail the CTS check. For that what you need to do is you have to install the BC box module and also magic Hide props config and set the fingerprint to oneplus 7 pro. It's an easy process but it is still one extra step you will need to do to get this device working with any sort of backing application or my galaxy gear s3 was not able to connect with the device because of that issue. As you can see now it is showing true but out of the box it will not be you will have to do this magic hide prop config yourself. Now the camera, it comes with an uh, oxygen OS camera which is decent, it works really well and uh, it does have all the options, it does have the wide angle lens, it does have the telephoto lens and also it has the normal lens. It works decently well, I didn't have much of an issue with it. I do want to mention that the slow mo options it doesn't work as you can see, slow mo doesn't work all the time. You can use google camera for most of the things which you want to do and I have been using it for a really long time. This is the 2.2 final version which was released on 16.7.2019 works really well it also has the wide angle display and the normal display and all that options are available if you enable it from the city this is also not fully stable uh, sometimes when changing the uh, lenses it will just randomly crash and you will just have to enable it again also uh, sometimes slow motion yeah enabling slow motion does crash it I believe it will be fixed soon enough and you will be able to use that for for the conceivable future but it is available it is a bug which you will have to notice now other than that the photographs were really good with Google Cam, I'm really really happy with how it's turning out. This is a photo which I took at a location with Google Cam and uh, I'm just bloody happy with everything which is going on there. Now the aesthetics of the ROM. This is what I wanted to talk about the aesthetic things. Now in the interface options you do have pixel UI settings which is really cool. Now background color can be light, dark, shady, glossy. Now glossy is a little bit transparent, you will be able to make that out from the name of it. Now dark and light is also pretty self-explanatory. Now in the shady options, you do have an option called theme color, in which right now I've selected black, which makes everything dark and black. You do have though a palette selection, where if you select one palette, you can see the base color changes to something else and you have a lot of versatility with it. It is kind of like the Omniron plum colors and all that, but in my opinion, cooler and much 
much more customizable. Action color can also be customized in all of these options, which is really nice to see. Fund manager is available. I would have liked to have Oswald, but I have found solace in Samsung One, which does work out really well. I have to say, the reason I like Havoc so much is that the customization options available for it, the, the, just having all the screens available on it is just so much better. I mean, I like the look of it. I like the look of it way more than Oxygen OS. Oxygen OS is in no way an ugly ROM. This one is just so much better. Now the overall experience of the using the ROM. As you might always know, I am a huge fan of Havoc ROM. It is one of my favorite ROMs available for any device it supports. I do profess that people should try it at least once and if it doesn't work for them then go for another ROM because this one has everything they need and also pretty good battle life to boot. I'm just happy with it. As I've already mentioned, I did try different kernels for it. For some reason, if you are on a custom kernel and if you select a single status as enforcing, it just breaks a lot of stuff like fingerprint scanner is broken and the double tap to wake is broken all that will be broken for some reason. So just keep that in mind. It is an, it is an issue which is ongoing with the 25.7 version of Havoc ROM. People are looking into it, letting you guys know though, the stock kernel is really good. Let me show you guys the boot animation which is pretty damn good. Here is the boot animation for Havoc ROM. It's been unchanged in the uh, latest Spy ROMs, but I love the boot animation. It's simple, it's quick, straight to the point, just like it. So there you have it guys, that is the Havoc ROM for the OnePlus 7 Pro. Is it the perfect ROM? No, it's, it's definitely not the perfect ROM, but it's damn close. I am really interested in seeing how this turns out. Every time I use OxygenOS with Renovate Dice and Triple X No Limits and all that, I say to myself, hey, this is all I need. It's stable, it works really well, it has pretty good battle life. And then I try something like Havoc OS and I just can't resist it. It is so much better and it, it just so much more speaks to me as I want the device to be. So one thing which I do want to mention is that one of my favorite feature about Havoc ROM is that it does have proximity speakerphone and also auto answer on Bluetooth but I have noticed that this doesn't work correctly on the fence about that and also it does have automatic call recorder so it works decently well. So guys that is pretty much it about the Havoc ROM. From what I can see I have made the video about more than 30 minutes. Hopefully it wouldn't be more than 30 minutes for you guys but if it is, it is. So yeah I guess I'm it about the ROM then hope you guys like the video please share subscribe. Subscribe and like the video if you found it useful. See you guys next time. Bye.